Professional photographer and photography instructor Nick Carver here. And the topic of today's video presentation is what is a full frame DSLR camera? Now I find from my students that possibly the most misunderstood topic found on the internet is the difference between a full frame camera and a digital format camera and whether or not full frame cameras are actually better. Now right off the bat I want to dispel just a few myths. Full frame cameras are not better than digital format cameras. You don't get better pictures with a full frame camera. Professionals don't only use full frame cameras. Full frame cameras are just a different system. Now I'm going to address the pros and cons of full frame cameras in a separate video called full frame, Cam full frame DSLR cameras, pros and cons. But in this video, I simply want to address how they're different and uh, why we have two different systems in the first place. So to understand the difference between full frame DSLR cameras and digital format cameras, we have to go back, all the way back to the days of film. Now if you're under the age of 25, and I say film, you're probably picturing something like this. But if you're over the age of 25, when I say film, you're probably picturing something like this. When most people picture film, what they're picturing is a 35 millimeter film camera. Now 35 millimeter film was the most common film format when film reigned supreme, but it wasn't the only film format out there. It was just the most common. So there were larger film formats. And to understand the different film formats here and to thus help understand full frame DSLR cameras versus digital crop sensor cameras, let's take a look at some negatives on a light table. So what you're looking at here is a piece of 35 millimeter film, so called because edge to edge it measures 35 millimeters. Now this was the most common film format, but there were other film formats available. For instance, here is one called 6x6. And that's called 6x6 because edge to edge it's measuring 6 centimeters by 6 centimeters. There was also 6x7 which measured, you guessed it, 6 centimeters by 7 centimeters. There was the large panoramic format called 6x17 measuring 6 centimeters by 17 centimeters. And then we switch out of the metric system and go to 4x5 which is 4 inches by 5 inches. And the list goes on and on. You go up to 8 by 10, 11 by 14, eventually 16 by 20, and the film formats just keep getting bigger. There were also some smaller film formats than 35 millimeter. There was the APS system, which had APS C and H, and uh, there were smaller film formats than that, but 35 millimeter tended to be the most common. Now, these larger film formats, like 6 by 17 and 4 by 5, uh, they were very great for landscape photography because the resolution was unparalleled. There's a huge amount of resolution in this large negative. But the cameras were huge, they were slow, they were heavy, uh, and they just didn't work too well for photographing Little Johnny's birthday party or the sporting event or wildlife or anything like that. So pretty much landscape photographers and a few product photographers and some portrait photographers uh, use these larger film formats. But for the average Joe, this wasn't uh, very practical. The medium format system was actually quite popular amongst fashion photographers, portrait photographers, even landscape photographers, because the extra resolution was really good for doing large blow-ups for fashion and um, portraits and landscapes and that kind of thing. But the trade-off was the cameras are pretty big, they're a little bit slower than 35 millimeter, and the film kind of got pretty expensive because it's, it's real big, at least for the average Joe. It was a little pricey, a little slow, a little heavy. Um, so these, uh, still quite popular, but not so good for every subject. That left the smaller systems. Now the problem with the real small systems is the resolution was terrible. In such a small negative, if you wanted to print really big, you just couldn't get a lot of detail out of it. Uh, 35 millimeter though, was a nice balance between decent resolution to print some decently large prints. You couldn't really print a you know, three foot by four foot picture with uh, great detail, but you could print up to eight by tens with, with ease. And uh, the cameras were still relatively small, the film was very affordable, and it was all very easy to use. So that's why 35 millimeter became kind of the de facto standard for uh, serious, profession or serious amateurs and, and many professionals. 35 millimeter could handle wildlife, sports, close-ups, landscapes, portraits, pretty much everything and it was a very versatile system. So that became the most popular. 
Okay, so let's fast forward to the days of digital. Now when digital first hit the scene, it was simply too expensive to manufacture a digital sensor the same size as a piece of 35 millimeter film. The cameras would have cost tens of thousands of dollars and uh, they would have only had a couple of megapixels, if that even. Uh, but film shooters using their 35 millimeter film SLR cameras really wanted digital versions of their SLR film cameras. They wanted to be able to use the same lenses and the same accessories and have the same control layout and all that. But camera manufacturers knew if they put a full frame 35 millimeter digital sensor in there, the cameras would have been too expensive and nobody would have bought them. So they basically worked out a compromise with their users. They said, we'll give you a digital SLR camera based on the 35 millimeter system. It's going to use all your same lenses and everything, but we're going to have to put in a smaller sensor in order to make it affordable. So they built a digital sensor around the much smaller APS-C film system. They used the same camera body, same lenses, same everything, but it just had a smaller sensor. Now this was a pretty good compromise because shooters got their digital cameras, they got to use their lenses, but there was just one trade-off. Since the sensor was quite a bit smaller, it basically would crop the center of the image a little bit. So you'd lose a little bit of the image around the outside edges and hence the name digital crop sensor. Now that was a good thing for some shooters and it was a bad thing for other shooters. For shooters looking to photograph things very far away, uh, like sports, wildlife, that crop effect was good because it made the lenses seem like they were more zoomed in than they actually were. But for photographers looking to do wide angle shots, landscape photographers, architectural, that kind of thing, their wide angle lenses suddenly weren't so wide angle anymore. Now that was a problem for wide angle shooters for just a little while because eventually camera manufacturers just invented a new lens that can go even wider and thus they were able to get wide angle shots on their digital format cameras just like they did on their full frame cameras. The only difference was they'd use different lenses. So full frame versus digital crop one is not inherently better than the other. It all depends on what you want to shoot. And if you want to get wide angle shots, you can do it on either system. You just have to use different lenses, that's all. But for a full rundown of the pros and cons of each system, check out my other video, Full Frame DSLR Cameras, Pros and Cons. But in the meantime, that's why we have the two systems. That's how they're different from each other. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.